the yoga instructor uh, walked over to assist him or do something and that's when I heard her scream. I looked up and I do not recall this, but I, told I, I was told that I yelled, he's got a gun. My girlfriend and I were doing yoga. I'm also into yoga. I think it's really good stuff. Balanced with exercising, with breathing and all that stuff is just really, I think, good for the body and the mind. And mm -hmm. so we just started the class on a Friday. It was about 5.30. And I heard this, uh, I heard this guy coming in late and I heard him ruffling through his bag. I just thought he was trying to get his yoga mat out, get going. Um, uh, but what I didn't realize was that he was a psychopath who brought a gun and he was so he pulled out a gun and I heard the yoga the yoga instructor scream so I look over and there's a man standing there brandishing a pistol sitting down exclusively with ABC News Joshua quick says he scanned the room for anything he could use to take on the shooter the only thing that was there that I could think of was this vacuum with a heavy end and I uh, so as soon as he came around the corner the gun stopped. I used that opportunity. I hit him over the head with it. Gunman fighting back, striking quick with the gun. The wounds to his face still fresh. The next thing I know, I'm grabbing a broom, you know, anything I can, and I hit him again. I thought, this is it. Like, like this is my day. Like, this is my time to go, you know? Daniela Garcia Albalat was shot in the leg. She believes quick is the reason she is still alive today. Thanks to him, I was able to try to rush out of the door. Um, I was slipping, I was um, dripping blood everywhere because I got shot through my thigh. He saved my life. I've heard other students since then telling their side of the story and they're like, I thought it was gonna be a prank. You know, I didn't think it was real. Wow. I knew exactly the kind of situation we were in immediately. I just didn't know how far this man was gonna take it. I didn't know if maybe he had some kind of inner conflict going on or whatever. But uh, um, so I saw the yoga instructor moving towards an alcove in the yoga studio and so that's kind of where i moved and we my girlfriend and i kind of went over there and ducked for cover and he just kind of unloaded started blasting and yeah. so uh um he sprayed i thought it was three or four times apparently he shot about 13 times wow. and i was looking for a weapon because when you're in those sort of situations where somebody has a weapon you're automatically at a disadvantage even if you know this person is maybe not a trained fighter you know but they are of you know average bill if they're a normally competent human being with a baseball bat they're they can potentially do a lot of damage yeah. you know but this guy has a gun you yeah. know so i wasn't sure what happened but i heard the gun click i thought it jammed and i'm still pretty convinced it jammed so i grabbed this vacuum cleaner they had in the corner i ran over and i used that to hit him over the head and then he pistol whipped me. I actually have a little scar Ugh. still here that you uh, can't really see on the camera probably. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I don't know. I just felt myself, felt myself fall to the floor. Mm -hmm. I didn't get knocked unconscious or anything. So I just pushed myself back up immediately, ran over, grabbed the broom. <laughs> that was a, my mind was just like, grab a weapon, you know, just grab mm -hmm. a weapon. Mm -hmm. I ran back over and I hit him again. Mm -hmm. And then I guess from what I was told, he elbowed me and I was like kind of standing and I was like, standing cross with this guy and and he was like looking at his gun trying to fix it whatever and people had gotten out at that point so me and my girlfriend we just kind of hightailed it out of there because we were like there's no reason to keep fighting and we just got out you know and so we got to safety and stuff but uh but yeah after that he loaded up the gun and shot himself and that was the end of his whole thing wow wow so, Wow. <laughs> yeah. 61 year old Dr. Nancy Van Vessem and 21 year old Maura Binkley did not survive the attack. Both had ties to Florida State University. Dr. Van Vessem was a faculty member and Binkley a student hoping to one day join Teach for America. When you were doing Kung Fu, did you did you do weapons training at all? And if so, yeah, we, we, we did a few classes on weapons training. We did a few classes even with guns mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. like like fake guns trying to like see how to disarm them. There was not a lot of opportunity to use that sort of thing in that situation. And, th and, there, and there's a, you know, I mean, there's a problem with with weapons training because, you know, if somebody wants to kill you, yeah. They can pretty much just do it. If somebody wants to walk up and just pull out a gun and shoot you, you know, then that's that that can I mean that that that's a very possible, very yeah. real thing. Like yeah. you can't you can do all the training in the world, right, 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 and right. and if somebody just decides to get the drop on you and you have no idea, mm -hmm. you know, uh, but uh, why do you think? I mean, do you think that that your training in martial arts 
or do you think it was something else that allowed that you allowed to, me to have the clarity to try to do something? Yeah. I mean, I think it was martial arts personally. I also trained as a nurse. I worked in healthcare for a long time, mm -hmm. but I, I, I mean, so some people think like, well, yeah, no, it was nursing because when emergencies happen, you know what to do. You keep going. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't know. Sometimes I think martial arts was that way. Mm -hmm. You know, you get in this sparring situation. You think I got to execute this technique mm -hmm. and then you just go for it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know. I think there's a, there may be, maybe even a combination, who mm -hmm. knows, but wow. Um, you know, I knew I had to run at this guy. I wanted to stop him. I mean, I wanted to hit him harder. Um, and it's, and it's just, there's, there's mistakes I made in that situation. You know, I mean, I think, I think, I think I look back on that and I wish I did some things differently. And I just followed my instinct though. One, to grab a weapon, mm -hmm. you know, and try to get leverage to try to even my, even myself out with this guy who has a weapon. Wow. You know. Did I, you ever, the second time after you hit him, did you mm -hmm. try to grab his gun at all? He, yeah, actually, that's the thing, is, like, I remember going at him with the vacuum, and he pulled the gun in, because oh. he knew I, that yeah. was one of the possibilities, yeah. was me trying to get the gun away from him, I see. and I remember seeing that gun come into him as I was bringing the vacuum over his head, and, uh, and he, another thing that I didn't notice, that I just didn't assess, was he put on earmuffs, oh. so he had earmuffs on, and I don't know if I maybe hit there or what, but, you know, that's something that maybe I should have been aware of. So in that sort of situation, that's one of the mistakes I think I made was not like paying attention to like where maybe his vital spots were for this specific instance. I just thought of a plan that generically I think I wanted to uh, like fit with this whole like situation and really maybe I should have adapted more to what was going on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it was a tough situation. We were in a corner and and like, you know, I wanted to fight, fight our way out. Yeah, and so, exactly. I mean, you yeah. have to. Yeah, you, you kind of have to. Those fortunate enough to escape headed to a nearby bar. Melissa Hutchinson tended to survivors. The gentleman who came in apparently tried to fight off the uh, attacker, and uh, he had quite a few wounds on his face. She recounted the victim's stories. They said that he came in and he had a, a black bag. He pulled it out, and um, as they went to go load it, everybody started pounding on the windows and on the walls to let people know there's been some news stories about it um you can definitely look it up you can pretty much google my name with it freaking yeah. saved lives man yeah, yeah, <laughs> saved lives, bro. it's crazy it, it was a relief seeing people get out yeah. you know like i hit them and i saw people start to run out but until that point everybody was just kind of frozen in place yeah and, you know? that's the common response in most shooter mm. situations people freeze yeah. people want to freeze it's, yeah it's um they call it a fight or flight no it's <laughs> fight or flight or Panic. Yeah. Most people yeah. panic. Yeah. Yeah. And it's so, crazy. I mean, yeah. And you just have to have a presence of mind. Yeah. You know, I mean, there, I mean, people still did some things in there, even not knowingly. I, and that's the thing, too, is I think people don't realize how little effort they really need to do to mm -hmm. make. To, to like to, to just have and to do to make a difference yeah right. you know I, I've heard about another shooting incident where there was a guy shooting people on like a, a, a like some kind of subway train or something way back in New York mm -hmm. and the only person who survived was the one person who actually like raised a briefcase up to like deflect the bullet you know wow. and was the only person who actually made a move but but seriously I thought that this, this guy's plan was to just go from person to person to shoot us all and I found out later actually that's not too far from the truth he brought about a hundred and Jeez. 20 rounds of ammunition wow. with them or 100, wow. 103 rounds I don't know it was wow. over 100 rounds of ammunition wow. that he brought Jeez. with them Shooter was a military vet who worked for a short time as a high school teacher in the past he's been charged with battery for allegedly groping women and had previously posted videos online with titles like why I hate cops and the rebirth of my misogynism I don't want people to be paranoid or walking around with like uh, some kind of fear about people in society because I think that's that's when these guys start to win you know that's right. when that's when their their right. plans actually start to have yeah. an impact yeah. Yeah. but but you know I think I think you know just realizing like your surroundings is a very key thing I think I think um, you know that, that that would probably be my biggest piece of advice situational awareness situational yeah. awareness because like honestly like 
I, I didn't even realize the vacuum was in there until I was like struggling to yeah. find a weapon. Yeah. You know, and now I think about like what I could turn into a weapon all yeah. the time. So that, that is a very good tip right there. When you're in a room, be like, okay, where yeah. are the exits? Yeah. 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 Where are exits? Where, what can where you are the with? things yeah. I could potentially use? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stuff like I, that. I mean, the, and the police, the police out there, they use a, um, they use a uh, system called, or I don't actually, I don't know if it's just out there. Maybe it's a national thing. Go the uh, run, hide, fight thing for active shooter trainings and. Uh, you know, I was talking to police, and they're like, we'll use your story every time we talk about this because, wow. you know, I think that was exactly how you were supposed to go through those steps. Which, I mean, I, I appreciate the homage, um, but, uh, you know, uh, it was it was a very real scary situation. And it's not, you know, it's, and it's, I'm somebody who was definitely the type who said, like, this is never going to happen to me. Right, the yeah. incidence of these things is so low. Mm -hmm. and, 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 it's, and it's okay to realize that statistically, yes, that may be true, but also... You know, you could be that statistic. You yeah. know, it's it's yeah. also still a very real possibility for every individual to be in one of those sorts of situations. Um, you know, and I think, I mean, I, I really wish I could tell you I have some crazy unique insight, right. like shatter minds with this stuff. But I think honestly, the best thing you can do is just be aware mm -hmm. and like aware. and like think think about like where you have like exit points and place and things that you can turn to weapons and. You know, this guy, he, he came in and he uh, he masqueraded as a first-time student. He didn't, you know, act too far out of the ordinary that people grew suspicious of him. Right. You know, so this could have been him. He just said, it's my first time. I don't, I've never done yoga before. And so, I, you know, you could write him off as, like, nervous. He was acting a little weird doing some mm. stretches or something like that. But he said he'd never done yoga before. Wow. And wow. So, when, so, this... so everything he said, he bought a yoga mat. Wow. It was in the plastic wrap still. So he brought a yoga mat as a prop. So he had some kind of weird plan yeah. about like how he was gonna like infiltrate in, but right. I think also maybe he didn't realize yeah. what it was gonna be like. I think it still was his first time ever being in a yoga class. He was huh. uh, unfortunately a very demented man and uh, you know, it's uh, it's it maybe he can go somewhere and you know. Do you think <laughs> that uh, I've been really impressed. I've been really impressed with your ability to to take care of, like to to sort of process this do you feel like that was your nursing training or what do you how would you attest that to oh gosh being in the moment i mean you know i mean the, i think i think like you know yeah the, i think the i i wasn't sure how this is going to impact me you know going forward and i don't think you know until you're in that situation mm -hmm. how this is going to hit you you know and um i've I've talked to some of the other people in the studio and some of them are doing really well. Mm -hmm. Some of them are having a tough time, mm -hmm. you know, and it's just a mixed bag like that. And so some of them are tougher than me. Mm -hmm. Some, some of them I'm like, how are you like so positive about all this? Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I'm like, dang man, like, <laughs> how are you doing this right wow. now? But, but you know, I, I think, I think I'm just, I was just so willing to carry on and dig back into my law school studies yeah. carry on my relationship with my girlfriend yeah. and just and just be be present in in my life you know i mean my the dean of the, uh, the the law school came up to me and was like you know like if you want to postpone finals and everything like you are more than welcome to do so and i just said no i want to just like yeah. full bore ahead Focus, yeah. just like i compartmentalize everything into that you know, semester and I just moved on, yeah. you know, and I was able to just, I guess, just separate myself because I realized I'm constantly changing. I'm constantly evol evolving. So even if there was some impact on me from the psychologically that, that the time is going to heal it. Mm -hmm. If I just, you know, keep myself present, keep myself, you know, engaged, mm -hmm. um, I'll be fine. So, you know, if something like this happens to somebody watching this, you know, and you're, you're kind of going through something, I think the best thing you can do is live your life. Mm -hmm. Be yourself and keep doing what you were doing before and find things that you love and just cling to those passions with all you've got because mm -hmm. that that will help you dissociate from whatever mental trauma a little bit. Mm -hmm. It'll help you pull away from that. Mm -hmm. And that's and that's I think where my mind was. And mm -hmm. you know, whereas there were some moments where I did think about it and I just you know, it it you know, I have to admit, you know, you get a little shot of adrenaline yeah. thinking mm -hmm. about it sometimes. Yeah, PTSD. You know, it was a little, it was a little, it was a close call. Mm -hmm. It was a very close call and, mm -hmm. uh, and it was a scary thing and it was almost caused, you know, injury to me and my girlfriend. So, mm -hmm. you know, it gets, you know, it's, it is scary to think about sometimes, but, but by and large, you know, you can just, you know, if you can keep your mind on the path in front of you, mm -hmm. like you'll be all right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know?
Any other kung fu stories to, to, <laughs> to, 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 to put that, one. that behind us? <laughs> one time I was sparring my friend and I hit my finger and it just... It hurt. It hurt, it hurt, it hurt so bad. It hurt. my finger. Yeah. Jeez, bro. Um, but um, yeah, I think, I mean, like, honestly, I, 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 hopefully that's the biggest story I ever got for yeah. you guys as far as this yeah. goes. <laughs> well, I'm freaking so thankful. I'm, dude, when I, when I first heard about that whole thing, I was like, one, I was just so thankful that you were okay. And two, I was just so, like, I can't tell you the amount of gratitude that I had towards God that you were okay first. Mm. And then secondly, mm-hmm. I was just, I was just like, wow. I just I had this enormous amount of, um, I don't know if pride is the right word, but I was very, um, I was very moved to know that you were my friend, oh. you know? And I'm serious. No, I'm, no, I'm serious. I'm, just, I'm, I'm 100. Percent, like, uh, like I get emotional thinking about it mm-hmm. now. But like, we've been through so much in terms of yeah. growing up together and everything that I was just like, that's yeah, that's the type of person <laughs> that my friend is, you know? Yeah. So yeah, you know, sh- you know, I don't think I ever really told you that, but you know, I love you <laughs> and and, and um, you know, very very thankful for for. <laughs> Obviously, protecting what you know, the people you love. But yeah. I'm just, I'm just right, bringing it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that! <laughs> this moment brought to you by the yeah. awesome people. Oh man! Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, look man. at that, man! You guys, you guys get Rob, Rob shed some tears, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, no, great. we we've got some really good stories growing up. Uh, the trouble that we would cause in Arizona because there's not a whole like Arizona is a little different now. But when we were mm. growing up things were a little less entertaining. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. we had to sort of come up with our own sort of, uh, uh, you know. Schemes. Yeah, yeah. We were, we were a little bit of some troublemakers. Just like but... residential sites, desert, and yeah. then like yeah. <laughs> construction. Did you, did you two ever spar with your kaiju kembo? No, and I mean, your... not really. Okay. I don't think so. We just yeah. like, we were just like wrestling. And yeah, I do remember. We, yeah, we had, some, we had some really good, uh, you know, just sort of, you know, what guys do, you know, boys sort of roughhouse and stuff like that. But, um, yeah. But yeah, no, I didn't get into I didn't get into like you know the jujitsu and the muay thai stuff till college and mm-hmm. everything. But but I do remember you going through kung fu, and I remember I remember thinking, wow, like I felt like this was really having an impact. Yeah, you could see it, like right, yeah. like yeah. So there was this point where I just got sucked in, yeah. like, and I was just like, this is this is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know. And I got a I got a great friend as far as muay thai goes. I got a great friend who's uh, uh, moved off out to Thailand. He was he was from Thailand. Mm-hmm. His name's John, oh, Sakhan Lem, and he does, he does, like, cage fighting out yeah. there, and he's, he's, he's an incredible fighter, he's doing stuff, like, I think he's doing, like, some... You told me about Sakhan Lem, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I think you told me about Sakhan Lem. We're going to Thailand. Yeah, Fight yeah, commentary yeah. breakdown is going to <laughs> yeah. Thailand. Exactly. Yeah, he's a, he's a great fighter. Wow. But, um, he kicked my ass. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all had our ass always, <laughs> and that's kind of how it goes, that's how you sort of learn humility, yeah. and it's also how yeah. you get better, yeah. is that yeah. you're, like... Don't ever want to get in that situation ever again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you get into these situations, you think about what you could have done yeah, differently for exactly. sure. I mean, that, and I think about, like, as far as the shooting goes, I think about that a lot. Like, yeah. what could I have done differently? Mm-hmm. And I think, like, part of it is because I wanted to help the people who were shot, people who were affected, you know, because there's a lot of people hurt, but also, like, you know, I just, I just think that's part of that fighter mentality, too, or, like, or just training and conditioning, is you think about how, like, man... If I'm ever in a situation like that again, like God forbid, yeah. you know, uh, you just kind of want to know you can create a little more security in your environment, yeah. you know, because exactly. yeah. it, it just in an ounce of an ounce more, you know, you never know how much how much impact it can make. So. Yeah, yeah, man, it's so interesting. Like, um, not to bring this up again, but uh, it's like when you think about the the atrocities that happened in Germany, mm. where it's like there was there was a huge lopsided number. And if they had just charged the men with the guns, people would have died, exactly. but they mm. but they wouldn't have gone to the gas chambers. Exactly. Mm. You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. And it's just like, yeah. Yeah. how do you, like how do you uh, level that out in your yeah. head? Because yeah. nobody wants to, nobody wants to take one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. <sighs> yeah. But yeah. it's like, at some point, you can't, you can't just, you can't just, accept it and yeah. go and go to the chamber yeah you know what yeah. i mean keep yeah. allowing things yeah. down yeah yeah i hear you and i think well and it's also it's hindsight too it's like now we know yeah 
and then, and then at the time, maybe they just didn't yeah, maybe know. Maybe they didn't know the extent of things. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah and, that, and that's, and that's the tough thing that, you know, so the hindsight that I have now looking back on some of these experiences and stuff like that, I'm just kind of trying to use and employ my foresight, mm-hmm. you know, so I can know in the future, yeah. mm-hmm. you yeah. know, but. And that's what Fight Commentary Breakdowns also tries to do. We're trying to learn from experiences. Yeah. So yeah. what is the future? Experiences. What is the future? Patent law. Patent law. <laughs> <laughs> no. If there's any firms. Yeah. <laughs> no, what, what, no, really. What, what is the, like, what's the ideal law that you want to study? What's the idea? I mean, patent law is great. Yeah. Okay. Patent law is great. I mean, you're like, and I had a friend who, um, who actually is getting into, wants to go into criminal defense. And I was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, yeah. not to, not to down criminal defense lawyers. Cause who knows? Maybe I'll end up becoming one now. I say that, yeah. but I just said, you know, you're going to be trying to, to a help. lot of stuff. Yeah. You're going to expose a lot of stuff and you're going to be defending the people who destroy. And I was like, mm-hmm. I want to sit next to the people who create. And right, I want to sit next to the people who right. build and do yeah. things and generate new things. So, yeah. and I just was, and I just said that's that's just kind of like the philosophy and the inner inner perception I have of, of it. And uh, and I think that kind of is a good way to sum it up for people. Yeah. And so that's why I like about patent law. Um, admin law is pretty cool. It's not my strong suit, but um, you know I know some great attorneys, some great judges who work in that area, mm-hmm. and. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what other kinds of law. Copyright law is cool. I met some great entertainment lawyers. Yes. That would help with everyone on YouTube because we have to deal with that. So, yeah. you know, he, we, we should encourage him to do copyright law. <laughs> yeah, I know a little bit. Yeah. Um, guys, we should definitely bring him back. And if yes. you guys have any questions for him, um, share it in the comment section. Um, I'll ask you later if you want to put your social media. You know, oh, if yeah, you want I it, mean, we can put your social media down there. Yeah, sure. And Guys, um, this was a great talk, a great interview. Josh Quick. And we've wanted to we've wanted to do stuff like this for a while. You know, this is no Joe Rogan experience, but it's the next best thing, I would say. Or it's a different thing. You know, it's standing and talking. It's more real. like a family. It's, it's real. real. It's yeah, real. Yeah, exactly. So, guys, if you like more interviews like this, let us know too. If you want to meet more of his friends, because as you can tell, he's got some cool friends. And any firms out there that are looking for a really awesome soon to be lawyer. <laughs> This guy right here. Exactly. Exactly. Can you imagine if I have like somebody's trying to you know like really take advantage of me with some script or some movie and I'll be like, go see my lawyer. (laughs) He's gonna whoop your ass. Exactly. That's what I'll do. I'm gonna sick him on you. Exactly. Josh, get him. Get him, Josh. Cool. Well (laughs) uppercut. So Josh, when are you next coming back to LA? Um probably in August. Coming out, see him again. Love, I love Cali. I oh. love coming out to visit, and uh, there's just like a way of life out here, and and uh, so I just love being in the vibe and mm-hmm. kind of hanging with people. Yeah. So yeah, run, hide, fight. Remember that. <laughs> run, hide, That's fight. Not a bad you can yeah. run, run. If you mm-hmm. can't run because someone's about to shoot you, hide. And if they're near you, you fight them. Mm-hmm. Run, yeah. hide, fight. And turn everything into a weapon. Laptops, yeah, yeah, everything. I don't care. <laughs> it maybe a two thousand dollar. Your nails can be a weapon, man. <laughs> yeah. Improvise. Mm-hmm. All right, guys. Thank you so much, Josh. Yeah. Thank cool. you. Bye, bye, guys.